Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. Good evening. I'm Andrew Trujillo with the latest from Denver 7, a messy commute tonight. Snow is blanketing the roads and highways all across the metro, and we warned you about the storm. And tonight, the real threat is the frigid near zero temperatures you could be waking up to. Let's send it over to Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson, who's tracking it all. We're on the edge of the Arctic air mass, and it's pushed down from the Dakotas into Colorado as this storm moves away. That cold hangs in there. Overnight, another three to six inches in the mountains, another one to three out of the northeast plains, maybe an inch or so in the metro area. It's not going to be a lot more snow, but it's dry, it's fluffy, it'll pack down, cause some black ice conditions early in the morning. Main story, look at these lows, zero to about five below zero, along with the winds making it feel 10 to 20 degrees below zero. Good news, doesn't last too long. By Friday, we drop back to two, but 37 in the afternoon, 43 on Saturday. Minor storm arrives on Sunday with some flurries, shouldn't be much, a couple inches in the mountains. Our next chance of significant snow will be next Tuesday. Drive carefully tonight and early Thursday. Thank you, Mike. Right now on your birth certificate, you're either listed as male or female, but what if that doesn't fit you? Under current law, individuals must go through a complicated legal process to change how they wish to be identified, and even then, many people say the end result isn't ideal. Denver 7's Jennifer Kowaleski is going 360 on the movement to change this and the backlash that's caused it to fail in the past. 12-year-old Jude is your typical teenage girl. I just never really felt like a boy. But Jude's birth certificate says her gender is male. So I've had my security card changed and my passport changed. And I'm really happy that that's all changed, but the birth certificate has not. Going from middle school to high school, eventually getting her driver's license, shuffling through security at TSA. Those are all times Jude will have to explain her gender is female. The state still has her gender wrong. When you walk into a doctor's office and you get called by the wrong gender and the wrong name, it's like not only like embarrassing, but it's also really insulting. Which is why Jude and her mother Jenna are both in support of House Bill 1039. The bill would make it easier to change her birth certificate to reflect how she feels and not how she was born without the word amended written on it. I would be able to say, you know, the government um, also has my back. Jude and her mother say this is about safety, privacy, and complete full happiness. Transgender people will be able to not have to think about getting employment and, and homes and being outed and having people question um, why their genders don't match. This is the fourth time this bill is being debated inside the dome. Republican senators have killed similar legislation three different times. But with Democrats in power in both the state house and Senate, one Colorado says this year is the year to get it done. This year, Colorado will become the third state. They rallied at the Capitol before the bill went to committee. Our bill also protects Executive Director Daniel Ramos says it confirms rules the state health department and DMV have already voted to allow. It offers three gender options, either male, female, or an X designation on both the birth certificate and the driver's license. And so what this legislation will do is it will take it from rule and it will make it it'll make it a statutory change. Right now, Colorado law requires a transgendered person to go in front of a judge to change their name and gender marker. They also have to print their old and new name in the newspaper before it becomes official. If this bill passes, people can make those changes by filling out a simple form and without needing a gender reassignment surgery. Opponents of the bill see this issue through an entirely different 360 lens. Republican lawmaker Mark Baisley told The Room he struggles with the idea of changing historical fact, even if a person's gender status may have changed later in life. These two people also testified against the bill. And I think bills like this will only make things even, can make things even worse because you cannot change a person's sex. But with the Dems in power, conservatives are picking their battles and aren't saying much about the legislation this year. Well, the Archdiocese of Denver would only say they're opposed. Jennifer Kovaleski, Denver 7. And we know you have opinions on this. If you or someone you know is impacted or would be impacted, email us at 360 at thedenverchannel.com. And you can also send us a message on Facebook or Twitter. Tonight, two innocent bystanders, a young couple from Littleton, is dead after getting hit and killed in the chaos of a chase overnight. Douglas County deputies tell Denver 7 the chase started after they spotted two speeding cars near Highway 85 in Highlands Ranch Parkway. Well, a car not related to the chase T-boned a car, killing the two people inside, and a woman was eventually stopped and taken into custody. And another driver is still on the run tonight. 
It is official Denver teachers say they will begin their strike on Monday. Governor Polis announced this afternoon he will not stand in the way of a walkout, removing the final roadblock that could have prevented this protest. Now, it is still possible the union and district could reach a compromise on pay before the week is out, but all signs point to substitutes in Denver classrooms come Monday morning. This has been your Denver 7 On Demand update. Thank you so much for joining us. And check back here later tonight for another update and download the Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. I'm Andrew Heal.